Welcome to Classic Tech Calibrations. What you're seeing right now is the 42 inch LG C2 on the left and the 48 inch LG C1 on the right. Now this video is not going to be a real comparison between them or a review of the C2 which will come in the future. This video is how you can use these 42 and 48 inch LG OLEDs as a computer monitor and how you can set them up properly for different purposes and preferences as well as for the most part eliminate the ABL at least to a large degree. So we're going to focus just on the 48 inch C1 here and you can see that the first step is you really don't want to have a lot of stuff on your desktop. Uh, the trash can's there, I just move it around every once in a while, not a big deal. Which is one of the few measures we're going to take to prevent burn-in. The other is you want to auto-hide the taskbar with this menu here. And then for your background, I suggest having folders of a lot of different pictures with varying colors and styles. Uh, nothing with text, I would suggest. And then through here, you can direct it to those folders and let it cycle the pictures every so often. So I set it to change as often as possible and I also use fit screen and get 3840 by 2160 images but that doesn't really matter just as long as the image on the screen is changing frequently. Alright so the biggest issue that a lot of people have using these as a monitor is ABL or when you open a window and it's white and you're dragging and changing the sizes and you see the change in the brightness so we're going to fix that. Now you may have heard that the LG OLEDs can't do 200 nits full screen and that is not the case. You need to know how to set the settings correctly in order to do that. And no, it does not involve service menu tricks or anything like that. Um, but this does apply to SDR. In SDR, which is what your desktop should be, uh, don't use HDR for your desktop use. We'll discuss that later. But in SDR you can get over 200 nits full field white and this doesn't just apply to these, it applies to the other sizes in these model lineups as well. So what you're going to do is pick whatever picture mode you want. You know, a lot of people just use game mode because it has the lowest input lag. As long as you're setting it to PC mode. So to do that, you're going to click home and then you're going to go to your home dashboard. And then from here you go in the upper right to the three dots. And then you can edit your inputs from here. And then by putting it into PC mode, you're going to get full 444 chroma. And it's going to disable a lot of processing. So yes, game mode will still have the lowest input lag. And generally, that's what most people will use. But if you want to have different modes, you can. All you got to do is just change that icon image right there to the PC icon. And then you go back to your input. It's now in PC mode. All right, so before we get into the settings, we're going to make sure that the TV is up to date and some other of the support settings and stuff is turned off. So with the updates, that's up to you. I suggest you have it up to date. Now, when it comes to the logo dimming and things like that, that is entirely up to you. I do not recommend using the pixel shift because that will cut the resolution. It will cause fuzziness. The image will move around. You will lose borders on your windows. So definitely turn off the pixel shift. And while you're in this menu, make sure the energy saving is turned off as well. And then the logo dimming, again, that's up to you. I turn it off. I have not experienced any issue using this as a monitor when it comes to image retention, burn-in, or anything. Uh, so I would turn that off as well. And if you want all the dimming disabled, I do have another video on disabling the TPC and GSR in the service menu. However, that's also up to you because if you would ever need service and they would happen to check the service menu log, there potentially could be a conflict there, but I've never seen that. All right, now we're gonna go check on AI, make sure AI stuff is turned off, except for AI Sound Pro. AI Sound Pro actually works well with making the speakers much louder and much easier to hear voices. All right, I'm gonna start with the ISF Expert Bright Mode, and then like I said, we will set up game as well. But the ISF Bright, I can use for general desktop viewing and watching whatever content. Okay, so now I will show how to get 200 nits full field or more out of the LG C1, C2, G1, G2, um, should be the same on the CX and so on. What you wanna do first, if you want 200 nits, is set your OLED brightness to around 93. Obviously there's panel variance, but then you're gonna drop the contrast to 80. Now what's important to know is contrast also affects color, so we will have to adjust color to compensate that. 
However, by reducing the contrast to 80, that will reduce the ABL. And by having the brightness around 93, that's about 200 nits. If you were to max it out, you could get as high as 215, maybe 230 nits. So we've increased the color to 55. The contrast and color interact pretty closely on a one-to-one -one level, so five clicks down on contrast means five clicks up on color. All right, so the only other real settings you need to do, the sharpness at 10, if you're using native 4K, won't do anything, but just in case you're using a game that scales differently, um, just go ahead and drop that to zero. And then the color gamut, you can leave it auto, and that's it. That's now 200 nits, whether it's a 10% window or a full field, it's within a couple nits of being exactly the same. So resizing our windows, they stay the same luminance. There's no more ABL, again, in SDR. And I forgot to mention this earlier, you do want to set your scaling in Windows to 100% for the sharpest and finest text that you can get on the display. But do know that it's a WRGB display, so text will not be as perfect as it would be on a regular RGB display. But it's going to be fine for the majority of cases. You also want to ensure that your refresh rate is set to 120 hertz, again, for the lowest input lag. All right, and also for SDR, you can use whatever gamma you like. Monitor use should be 2.2. However, if you watch a lot of content too on it, then you can use 2.4 or 1886 if you like. That's more dependent on your personal preference and your viewing environment. And speaking of personal preference, when it comes to viewing a display this large, especially in a not very bright room, I find 200 nits to be way too bright in SDR. So if you set the brightness to 63 and keep the contrast at 80, then you'll have 150 nits, again, regardless of the size of the window on the screen, it's a consistent 150. Again, not accounting for panel variance, it might be off a few nits, but roughly 150. So, and for this mode, I also use BT1886. Not only is my room fairly dark, and I just like that better, but it does, um, affect the saturation and don't forget to set the color depth back to 55 since we lowered the contrast to 80. And then on this mode also going to lower sharpness. Alright you can now set up the same for game mode. I'm not going to go through showing it again but the settings everything would be the same. Alright so we're going to switch over to showing it on the 42 inch C2 and the 48 inch C1 and how with the same settings and the same setup you can see it works on both. It's not just for one, it'll be on all of them. You can also see that I have my lamps on so you can see how the reflections, even at 200 nits, it handles those lamps hitting the screens directly perfectly fine. And what I love about glossy screens is it doesn't blow out the reflection or make it brighter. So it's very easy to deal with reflections in my opinion and is why I have to have one of these OLED displays as my monitor. I cannot go back to a monitor with the anti-glare. All right, so now going back on the not using HDR for your desktop, as well as showing that ALLM or switching to game mode does work with this setup. So the desktop is designed for SDR and you should be an SDR. And when you launch anything that's HDR, it will automatically switch. You don't have to do anything. And the same way with a game, if you launch a game, it will switch to game mode without you having to do anything. And now in HDR, the ABL in real content is not really an issue. You leave the contrast and brightness, all that alone, leave it at 100, do not adjust it. Don't worry about the ABL. It's really only an issue with the actual desktop use in SDR. And now that we've addressed that, it's not an issue. Again, up to 200 to 250 nits. Um, it would take an extremely bright room to need more than that. And then depending on your video card, so if you have an NVIDIA with G-Sync, you can go into the game optimizer, make sure the G-Sync is toggled and FreeSync is off, but if you have AMD, then you do the reverse. And that's really all you gotta worry about in that menu. Do not use boost mode. Um, I've covered boost mode before, and if there's still confusion or anything more, maybe I'll do another video on boost mode with the 2022 models, but do not use it. It doesn't even work at 120 and your computer should be set to 120 Hertz. So keep boost mode off. All right, now to cover the HDR brightness in our games, you may first need to go into the game settings and ensure that the HDR is turned on in the game settings. It may take a reboot after doing that. 
then you're going to go into the brightness. So Destiny is a good one as the brightness slider actually represents what you're actually getting pretty well. So my personal display was almost 700 nits so I could set the peak brightness to around 700 and that's fine. In HGIG compliant games you can set 800 and that would be fine. You really don't want to go over a thousand unless the game just has broken sliders. There's other channels out there that help with that kind of stuff like gaming tech. Um, so you can check individual game settings that way. And then when it comes to the tone mapping for the TV, you want to just leave it on HGIG. Even games that do not support HGIG like Destiny, it's not HGIG compliant. It's still going to give you the most accurate representation and the most defined and brightest highlights of the three modes. Now, if you don't like HGIG, because some people just don't like the accurate look, then you may want to use dynamic tone mapping and then play around with the sliders, because if you do use dynamic tone mapping and the dark areas are too bright, you may need to pull the slider down to closer to 5, maybe 600 nits to bring those areas down. And again, that's all individually game dependent. All right, now I'm just going to show how picking through the different tone mapping options does affect the highlights and how HGIG does have the brightest highlight with the most detail. And then that's pretty much it. Your LG OLED TV is now set up as a monitor and we've also reduced or eliminated the ABL up to the usually recommended 200 nits for monitors. However, again, I think with such a large display as a monitor that 200 nits is too high. But that's why I showed 200 and 150, and you can even bring it down from there if you want. Uh, both the C2, C1, they're very, very close and similar in performance. There's a few minor differences. Again, I'll do a review on the 42 C2. Here's what the sizes of them look like. Uh, didn't have them perfectly even in the middle, but close enough. So I hope this helps you. I hope you like the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.